Hi everyone, this is ZF Mazibogo speaking. I'm going to take you through Engineering Science N3 for Report 191. Today we are going to do Module 4, which is Friction. I've separated friction or divided friction into two parts. The first part will be dealing with the object on the horizontal plane, and the second part will be dealing with the objects on the inclined plane. I've used the Engineering Science Entry book by G. Olivia and the previous question paper for November 2018. Let's start by defining friction. Friction is the opposition to motion of two surfaces in contact, and it is also the resistance to motion of one object moving relative to another, and it is the result of the electromagnetic attraction between the charged particles in two touching surfaces. Let's take the advantages and the disadvantages of friction in engineering. Friction enables moving objects to slow down or stop. It also makes movement possible and prevents slips in belt drives. And for the disadvantages, friction causes wear and tear. It also causes heat generation and causes a need for more force and more power. How do we determine the coefficient of friction? When a force is applied to pull the block, as soon as the block starts to move, a reading will be taken on scale. This reading, together with the weight of the block, is used to calculate friction using the formula mu equals to the frictional force over the normal force or over the weight. The angle of friction is the angle between the resultant and the normal reaction. And the angle of response or repose is the largest angle between the inclined plane and the horizontal before a body starts to move. Let's take the static and the kinetic coefficient of friction. The static coefficient of friction is the friction force between two objects when neither the object is moving. And we use the formula F needed to move the block over the normal force or over the weight. And for the kinetic coefficient of friction, this is the friction force between the two objects when an object is moving. We'll use the formula F, which will be the force to keep the block moving over the normal force or over the weight. Let's take an example. A block of 2 kg lies on a table and a force of 7 newton is required to move the block. And a force of 6.5 newton is required to keep it in motion and we need to calculate the following. The static coefficient of friction and also the kinetic coefficient of friction. Let's start with the kinetic coefficient of friction. In order to calculate it, that will be the F to keep the block moving, which means that will be 6.5 Newton over weight or the normal force. So that will be 2 times by 9.8. So your kinetic coefficient of friction will be 0 0.333. And for the static coefficient of friction, we need the force that's needed to move the block. So that force will be 7, and the normal force will be 2 times by 9.8. So our static coefficient of friction will be equal to 0 0.357. Derivative of formulas in a horizontal plane. If you got an object that is lying over the table, that object is having the forces around it even if it's not moving. We've got the normal force that is opposed by the weight that is going down. And if your force applied is applied towards east, your frictional force will be opposing towards west. If your applied force is towards west, it means your frictional force will be towards east. Your applied force will be equals to 
your frictional force. And the normal force going up will be equal to the weight going down. And from the formula mu equals to Fu over Nr, we can get the formula to calculate the frictional force, which will be equal to mu times by the normal force. Using this formula, you can answer any questions that you will be asked for this diagram. If they need you to calculate the magnitude of Fa, you just substitute Fa instead of Fu, and you will get the magnitude of Fa. If you need the magnitude of weight, you'll just substitute it instead of Nr, then you'll get the magnitude of that weight. Let's continue. Let's say now we are moving or pushing these objects in a horizontal surface. Your force applied will be making an angle with the object. So you will have Fa and an angle. And you will be needed to construct such that you will get a triangle. How do we do the construction? You've got two methods. The first method, you can use Fa as your resultant force. So if Fa is your resultant force, you can use head-to-tail method. Fa will be the force that started where all forces start and ends where all forces ended. So it means you will draw or construct your vertical component or your vertical line going down and your horizontal line going towards the end of your resultant force. The second method you can use FA and use its direction. So if the direction of FA is southeast, so it means you'll start from where FA started, going down towards south and going towards east. Now we'll have the vertical line and the horizontal line. And that vertical line will be your vertical component and that horizontal line will be your horizontal component. Now, how do we get the magnitude of the vertical and the horizontal component? We use the tr tr three trick ratios. This side, which is the vertical component, is opposite to an angle. So we need to get the trick ratio that we'll use, Fa as the hypotenuse side and the opposite side. And that trick ratio will be sine theta. So now the magnitude of this vertical component will be Fa, the sine of theta. And for the horizontal op component, we'll find the trick ratio that is using, sorry, the hypotenuse side and the adjacent side. So that will be your cos theta. So the magnitude of this horizontal component will be Fa, the cos of theta. Now we have to derive the formula to calculate the magnitude of the force that will push this object along the horizontal plane. We'll be taking the sum of the vertical component and the sum of the horizontal components. If we check our horizontal component, we have Fu towards west, and Fa, the cos of theta, towards east. These are the parallel forces, and also we can take them as the sum of the horizontal components. So your Fu will be equal to Fa, the cos of theta. Then let's check the forces in the vertical line. Those forces, we call them the vertical components. Your Nr is moving towards north and Fa is the sine of theta together with the weight they are moving towards south. So your normal force will be equal to weight plus Fa the sine of theta because these two forces are moving towards the same direction we are going to add them. 
so the sum of your vertical component will be w plus fa the sine of theta so we'll take the same formula as we've took in the first example the frictional force equals to mu times by the normal force we are going to call this formula the universal formula because all the formulas will be derived from this formula so now we are going to substitute with the sum of the vertical component and the sum of the horizontal component for fu we are going to substitute by fa the cos of theta as we've got it equals to mu into nr and for nr we are going to substitute what you've got for nr which will be w plus fa the sine of theta so now we are going to use this formula to get the magnitude of the force that will push this object along the horizontal surface let's pull this object now along the horizontal surface again now we've got this force applied pulling this object with an angle so again you will need be needed to do construction you will have your horizontal component which will be equal to fa the cos of theta and the vertical component will be equal to fa the sine of theta let's check the horizontal components fu which is the frictional force will be still opposed by fa the cos of theta and your vertical component your nr and fa sin theta they are moving now towards north and they will be opposed by your weight so your weight will be equals to nr plus fa the sin of theta so we make nr the subject of the formula so we will got weight minus fa the sin of theta as the sum of the horizontal components and we'll take the universal formula again to derive the formula to calculate the magnitude of force to pull this object along the horizontal plane fu equals to mu times by nr then instead of fu we are going to substitute with fa the cos of theta equals to mu and instead of nr we are going to substitute with w minus fa the sine of theta because that is what we've got for the normal force and now we've got the formula to calculate the magnitude of fa that will pull this object along the horizontal surface if you can check the two formulas the one in number two where we have pushed the object along the horizontal surface and this one where we are pulling this object along the horizontal surface only the sign that will change so if we are pushing the object along the horizontal surface you will have fa the cos of theta equals to mu into w plus fa the sin of theta and if you are pulling that object you will have fa cos theta equals to mu equals to w minus fa the sin of theta so it means the difference will be in the signs let's take the workouts this is from the textbook number 9 in page 17 of module 4 a block with the mass of 2.2 kg is pulled across the horizontal plane by a force of 10 newton this force is just sufficient to move or to overcome the friction we need to calculate the coefficient of friction between the block and the plane this is the diagram from the statement here we'll have the object with 2.2 kg mass and we can change that to weight and that will be 2.2 times by 9.8 this weight will be equal to the normal force so the normal force will be equal to 2.2 times by 9.8 
and we ha having the force that is equal to 10 newton that will be equal to your frictional force so we are going to use the formula mu equals to fu over the normal force or over the weight remember nr will be equals to your weight and your fu will be equals to fa so now let's substitute mu will be equals to 10 which will be equals to fu and your weight will be 2.2 times by 9.8 so your coefficient of friction will be 0 0.464 Let's take workout 2. Again, it's from page 17 of module 4 in your textbook. And this is number 14. We've got a pulling force of 3 newton that is sufficient to move a block with the mass of 1.2 kg across the horizontal plane. And we need to calculate the following. A, the weight of the block. B, the coefficient of friction between the block and the horizontal plane. C. The pulling force required to move the block horizontally if the mass of the block is doubled. Again, I've, been, I've drawn the skeleton of the sketch from the statement. Let's take A. In order to calculate the weight, we are given the mass that is 1.2. We multiply it by 9.8, then our weight will be 11.76. For B, the coefficient of friction, your mu will be equal to the frictional force over weight or over the normal force. So this will be 3 divided by 11.76, then your coefficient of friction will be 0 0.255. For the C, to get the pulling force if your mass of the block is doubled. So your FA will be equals to 3 times by 2. So your FA or your applied force will be equals to 6 Newton. Let's take the third workout. Again, this one will be from the previous question paper which is November 2017. And we'll take question four, 4.2. We've got a steel block with a mass of 5 kg that rests on a horizontal plane and a force of 12 newton is required to set the block in motion and the horizontal force of 9 newton is needed to keep the block in motion. And we are needed to calculate the following. A, the coefficient of static friction. B, the coefficient of kinetic friction. Let's take A. For the coefficient of static friction, remember, in a coefficient of static of friction, we need the force required to move the object. So that force will be 12, and we'll divide it by the weight, that is 5 times by 9.8. So your coefficient of static friction will be equal to 0 0.245. And the coefficient of kinetic friction will be the force needed to keep the body moving, which is 9, divided by the weight, then your answer will be 0 0.184. This is the end of the first part of friction, which is the part that deals with the objects in the horizontal surface. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.